Our interview segment this morning brought to you by Deep South Sanitation. Hey, uh, call Kerry Scarber and his staff for safe, reliable, affordable, and experienced uh, sanitation needs. If you live in an area in the city or county where trash pickup is not available, call Deep South Sanitation, 559-0200. Locally owned, family operated, local folks, to, and that's who we want to do business with, local folks. So we appreciate the good folks at Deep South Sanitation. We also appreciate our guest this morning, uh, Doug Calloway, the executive director of the Georgia Transportation Alliance. Joining us this morning, Doug, good morning. How are you? Great, Chris. Good to be with you. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, we discussed the issue of uh, the transportation special purpose local option sales tax. And before we really get into the discussion, I want to make sure people do distinguish the T-SPLOS, uh, other than it's not the SPLOS tax or the uh, local option sales tax. They are all different in, uh, in what they can do and uh, what they can be spent on and things like that. Uh, the T-SPLOS has been in the news a lot lately. And Doug, uh, first of all, tell us a little bit about the Georgia Transportation Alliance before we get into the T-SPLOS issue. Will do, Chris. Uh, yeah, last year the Georgia Chamber of Commerce uh, made a, a, quite frankly, a gutsy call. They said, "Look, it, there's a lot of chambers around this, a lot of state chambers around the country that sort of pay lip service to transportation and say it's important, but here in Georgia, we want to go one step further. We want to actually create an affiliate of the Georgia Chamber of Commerce called the Georgia Transportation Alliance to be advocates every single day." Uh, maybe not 24-7, but 365 days a year, advocates for transportation here in Georgia, but from a business perspective. Uh, you know, you expect road builders and engineers to be supportive of transportation. You, you may not be as, as uh, expecting of other organizations like Georgia Power or public supermarkets or SunTrust Bank or, or Bell's Department Stores, uh, other ones like that, to be supportive and um, and what you see is there's, there's a growing consensus that we've got sort of twin challenges here in Georgia. One is a lagging economic recovery, and the other, and everyone knows about that. And then the other one is what most people don't know about is we've got really a sort of transportation funding crisis. Uh, and so the Georgia Chamber ought to be commended for creating this Georgia Transportation Alliance and then going out and, and uh, hiring me and to, to help run that because we are strong advocates from a pro-business uh, side of the equation for transportation, and uh, that's what we're all about. Now, Doug, I'm going to play some devil's advocate with you this morning because what we hear and what we some folks have said about T-SPLOS, and we've had guests on the show say, hey, it's just another tax. We, you know, Do we need another tax? Uh, what's it going to do for us? It's a statewide thing that people are, I think, a little worried that money – that is uh, brought in here. We'll go to Atlanta. Uh, tell us. Uh, t- tell. I'll let you give you a chance to uh, take on some of those uh, discussions. Yeah, that's a good question. In fact, Chris, I'm far right of center politically. Um, I've worked for two uh, Republican members of Congress and uh, served on George W. Bush's Transportation Advisory Council for his transition in, 19, in uh, 2000. Uh, current Florida Governor uh, Rick Scott. I was on his transition team for economic development. After he was elected, in fact, I headed up the review of the Florida Department of Transportation. So I've got pretty good credentials on the on the right side of the of the uh, political spectrum. Um, which so I don't like taxes. <laughs> but but here's the simple fact: is not all taxes are created equal, and not all the government services they pay for are created equal. The difference here is we've got local control over what we're spending from start to finish. It, Chris, if you boil it down to its lowest essence, in my view, this is the way we ought to be funding all of government because we get to pick what kind of government services we're willing to support by voting for them at the ballot box. The best analogy I can use is, you think of it, if you've got cable TV, you know, you might get a standard package, and uh, there might be channels in there that, that you really don't want to watch, but you, you pay for all of it. Mm-hmm. In some ways, that's kind of what we've got with government right now. I'd rather, rather than having the buffet, I'd rather go and, and order a la carte and decide which parts of government I think are legitimate and are being run well and that I'm willing to fund. And that's what this is, because you've got a list of projects that were devo- developed by local folks in your region and in your counties. They pick the projects. Uh, we decide locally on July 31st whether to support those or not. And then who gets the benefits? Well, guess what? We do locally. We get to keep the money all of the money stays right here in southern Georgia. None of it, and that's important to understand, none of it goes to, to, uh, to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And, and the other, other myth that you hear sometimes is all our money is going to go to Atlanta. Nope, that's not true. And then the other one is, well, MARTA, our, our, our uh, mass transit is going to come to 
to other parts of the state, well, unless it's on your project list, <laughs> which it isn't, it ain't coming. And that project list is available. I mean, it's uh, the Georgia oh. Department of Transportation, and Absolutely. I'm looking at it right now, and there's a... Uh, Oh, I don't know, maybe 15 things in Lowndes County to, uh, that, I mean, not only does it have those projects, but also uh, how much those projects would cost and how much uh, the t plus money would go to those projects. Absolutely. In fact, on our website, which is connectgeorgia2012.com, you know, I run the Transportation Alliance, and then we created a, a sort of campaign entity called Connect Georgia to help us run the races in the 11 regions outside Metro Atlanta. Uh, and so connectgeorgia2012.com is the campaign site you can go to. I mean, yeah, Chris, there's excruciating detail, somewhere between 80 to 100 pages or 120 pages per region as to uh, uh, the details. It's very transparent. And in your region, which is called Region 11, so we're southern Georgia, uh, the revenue projection is when your voters, when our uh, folks all around the state vote yes on July 31st, over the next 10 years, that would generate $670 million in the southern region alone for transportation projects. Mm-hmm. 75% of that money is going for those projects already identified by the, the regional roundtables, which were comprised of a county commissioner and a city mayor from each county. Got together last year. They, they worked out what the most important projects were for your region, and they're all legitimate projects. Good grief, they're... Some of them uh, in other parts of the state have been on the books for 40 years, and they're legitimate and they're, they're needed, but the money would always run out before the projects got done. So they're great projects. The other 25% of the money, that $670 million, is going to come back to the individual counties and cities in Region 11, southern Georgia. So, like I tell people, I'm not the brightest bulb, but even I know that 75% of the money for regional projects and 25% of the money for local projects, 75 plus 25, that's 100%. That's all the money. All the money stays there. Now, Doug, let me ask you now, when ever people talk about, you know, why do we need this now? We, with the, everything going on with the economy as it is, we know what would uh, all these transportation projects, things that we would like to have, but is now the time to do them? Oh, yeah. Uh, in, in fact, um, now is the ideal time. In fact, if we don't take advantage of it now, I fear we'll regret it for years to come, <clears throat> because here's a simple fact. Economists from UGA, University of Georgia, late last year, November, December, said in, a, in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution and elsewhere, they said that Georgia won't return to pre-recession levels of employment until 2020. Chris, that's eight years from now. Mm-hmm. You know, where I grew up, we had an old saying as a kid that there's two ways to get to the top of an oak tree. One is to sit on an acorn and be patient, and the other is to start climbing. Mm -hmm. Well, in our case, we've got an opportunity. Every other state that I know of doesn't have the option of choosing to vote uh, themselves an economic shot in the arm for transportation like we do, called T-SPLOS. So they're resigned to have to sit on that acorn and wait a long time until that that, uh, oak tree grows. In our case, we can start climbing. And if we don't have... Uh, a, a better economic development tool in our toolbox, I don't know what it is, because you got, we'll have to wait eight years for the econ- economy to really turn around. Uh, there was a, a great piece also in, uh, in the paper not long ago, back in February, I guess, where they quoted a state senator who said that Georgia has had higher than the national average in unemployment for 50, 5 zero, 50 consecutive months. And the media checked, you know, they do PolitiFact, that mm-hmm. were checked to question whether someone's saying the truth or not that came back true that was true yeah so we've got we've got we, we really need some help economically we also need help transportation wise and so this is this is the one solution to both problems but it's a heck of a down payment and it's the right thing at the right time and, and also one last thing during an economic downturn like right now costs are down dramatically the analogy is there's sort of a, a sale going on on transportation. We can get bargain basement prices for the transportation work we, we want to do and we know we need to do to remain com- to, really, to get competitive again. We're, we're, we're stopping in terms of our, we're lagging in terms of our economic competitiveness with our surrounding states and elsewhere in the world. Uh, Doug, let me ask you again. Doug Calloway joining us this morning from the Georgia Transportation Alliance. Lowndes County has been termed a donor county. but And here's what I mean. Uh, I know you know what I mean. But uh, the uh, the expected revenue generated by Lowndes County through this uh, 10-year uh, T-SPLOS tax would be a, an estimate 
about $252 million and some change. Uh, the allocation that Lowndes County is expected to get from that estimated would be about $162.7 million. So that's the difference, obviously, of uh, us, you know some millions of dollars that Lowndes County would not get back that they would generate. So and so that's within the region of 18 counties. So to Lowndes County folks, how do you say, you know, what do you say to that, that, you know, that you're still going to get what you pay for? Yeah. And that's another great question. And, and here, uh, and, and I'm glad you asked it because like we've said before, we said this off the air is everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but not their own facts. And, and here's what the facts are. Uh, you're looking at this on a regional basis. That's appropriate. The money you're talking about, I don't have the details that you're citing right mm-hmm. in front of me, but don't forget that may be being calculated on um, the 75% of the money that's been devoted to regional projects. There's the other 25% that comes back. So I don't know whether it's accurate to, de- to term Lowndes County a donor or not, mm-hmm. but let's assume that it's accurate, mm-hmm. that it's true. Here's the best way to look at this. In your area, really, Valdosta, Lowndes County, is, is the major economic engine for, mm-hmm. that, for that region. Right. And so it's in your economic self-interest to make sure that the surrounding counties have good transportation projects. Why? Because that allows folks there to come to Valdosta to spend their money to generate and improve Valdosta's economy. And guess what? Because we're talking about a sales tax, when they come to Valdosta, they help pay your sales tax for you. That's a, that's a winning proposition. And that's pretty easy. to pre- If you go to a, a Walmart or a Publix or whatever and just do a car tag quick count, I mean, you'll see Berrien County, Cook County, Lanier County, you know, all these other counties, this is the uh, the economic hub for that. They're certainly the retail hub. Uh, but not only that, but on I-75, and it's, I think it's a little bit different for those counties on Interstate 75 because not only do you get counties from around this area, but travelers from other states who are participating in that as well. Absolutely. I mean, I know the sort of the conservative estimate is statewide that somewhere between 15 to 30 percent or higher of the tax of that one penny uh, sales tax when, when TSPOS passes, would be paid by non-residents of the region. Mm-hmm. I know for a fact in, um, in Chatham County, in Savannah, in Chatham County, 40% of their sales tax is paid by people who don't live in Chatham County. I've seen that number here as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, ask yourself, what happens eight times a year up in athens Clark County every fall? Well, there's a big old football game. <laughs> and you've got people coming from outside the county, outside the region, outside the state, sometimes outside the country to go to UGA football games. And, and I'd be willing to bet there's probably folks that come to Valdosta State football games right there in Lowndes County. Right. Yeah. Now, one other concern that uh, some folks have brought up and I want to run past you is that, okay, so the money's raised through T-SPLOS will come back to this region. They won't be spent in Atlanta. They won't be spent on Mott or anything else like that. I mean, they're for the projects, which, uh, again, you mentioned have been listed and have been uh, designed by folks here locally. However, uh, there's some concern that uh, other money, uh, other matching fuel tax money, will be redirected. So while we're kind of getting it in one hand, we're paying it out in the other. Well, well again, what it reminds me of, see, I'm a lot older than some of your folks out there. I can remember back to the 1980 presidential race when you had uh, Ronald Reagan and Jimmy Carter running against one another. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm not picking sides in that whole thing, but, but I remember uh, Reagan would sort of shake his head and say, there you go again. <laughs> Well, that's the way I feel here, because um, what, what some of the folks have misinterpreted is, I think, a term redirect. That's meant redirect in your area, not, not, not redirect to the rest of the state. In fact, I know for a fact that Georgia DOT on their website ha- has clarified what that means. I mean, th- there are some folks that, that are, uh, are justifiably skeptical of government. Mm-hmm. I am, too. Right. That, but that's why I'm voting for this, because I know this is the, the alternative to the traditional model paying for government services that are legitimate. There's a lot of government services I wish we weren't paying for. This is one of them. You know, we can go back to the Founding Fathers in terms of showing the legitimacy of transportation. And then we also know that there's, you know, we ought to be doing transportation because it's the right thing and it helps us be competitive, but it also helps create jobs both in the short term and in the long term. That, that $670 million I talked about in your, in your southern region right there, mm-hmm. the projected jobs supported by that created or supported is over 18,000 jobs now when you say short short term you mean uh, construction that kind of thing but then long term i guess you know luring manufacturers and that kind of thing absolutely i mean if you look at um site selectors the folks that decide where they're going to move companies businesses factories manufacturing all sorts of stuff like that the number one issue they look at is transportation 
And so let me answer very clearly. That whole issue of redirect is a bogus issue. All the money raised from TSPLOS stays in your area. If that money generated from TSPLOS is used to, to uh, sort of replace money already programmed for other projects already in the pipeline, guess what? You've got icing, that's icing on the cake. That, that other money is then used for other projects already in the pipeline that don't have money yet for your area. But it's still not in this going area. anywhere else gotcha. by law. By gotcha. law, it can't go anywhere else. Now, let me ask you something, and this is something I just don't know the answer to, is that let's say that Lowndes County votes against East Bloss, but the region as a whole votes for it. Now, how is that going to match up? How does that work? Yeah, it, because this was uh, the legislation called TIA, the Transportation Investment Act, 2010, created this as not a statewide election. It's all happening on the same day, mm-hmm. but it's not statewide. It's in 12 different regions all across the state. So in your region, which is called Southern Georgia, Region 11, it's not what each county does. It's what's the total votes generated for this or against this. Mm-hmm. So if uh, on July 31st, we wake up August, either night of July 31st or August 1st, uh, you look at it with 50% plus one. So it's what's the total vote in your area, regardless of which counties may or may not say things. Gotcha. So, so it's, it's all in. There's no opt-out, basically, for individual counties. There are so many questions about this, Doug, and we're going to continue to talk about it because we want folks to be informed when they go to the polls. But uh, is there a website where people can go to to see some of the things that you've been talking about this morning? Absolutely. And, in fact, Chris, that's the best thing we can do because what we know is people who are informed about the truth become supporters of this. People who've been skeptical or opposed, when they simply find out what this does and sometimes, more importantly, what it doesn't do, they're in favor of it. Mm-hmm. So we've got all sorts of stuff on our website. It, again, it's connectgeorgia2012.com. Not only do we have information there, we have a Q&A. We have, quite frankly, a fact versus fiction sheet. Because I can guarantee you there's a lot of misinformation out there from folks that are just, again, everything. Well, at some point, if we're going to sort of move this state forward, and especially Valdosta, Lowndes County, we've got to be for something. This is the something to be for. And if you've uh, been in your car this morning and just heard part of this, we're talking with Doug Calloway from the Georgia Transportation Alliance. And what we'll do is we'll have this uh, entire interview on our website, uh, along with a link to that site at ValdostaToday.com. So if you missed some, you can go back and uh, listen to some of the discussion this morning. Because I do feel it's important. It's a, it is a big investment, but again, uh, you know, that's, sometimes you have to make that big investment to get the results that you need. And so uh, whether you're for or against it, just uh, know all the facts before you do cast your ballot. And we hope that you do on July 31st. Doug, thank you so much for your time this morning. We really do appreciate it. Great, Chris. Good to be with you. All right. Have a great day. Thank you.